Hey everyone, today I'm going to give you a quick tour of the ROM Vault UI and point out a few um, tips and tricks along the way. So the main ROM Vault UI is divided into a few different sections. We got your side buttons over here, which are your main tasks. You have the info panel up at the top, which just shows information about whatever you have selected in the tree here. So the info panel is showing, you know, the ROMs got, ROMs missing. And then if you drill down into a particular DAT, you can see the information about that DAT. Um, over here, we have the game list grid, which, you know, you can highlight any of the games and you can see, you know, the information update up in the info panel. Over on the, um, over on the right side here, there's filters. So you can see, um, you know, sets that are, com are complete, sets that are incomplete, stuff that has fixes. If you have done, you know, the find fixes action, you can also filter by keywords. So here you can just, you know, simple string filtering here. It doesn't really support regex or anything yet, but, um, you know, pretty simple stuff. If you have a game selected, um, you can see information down in the game list grid. So, or I'm sorry, down in the ROM details grid that shows um, the status of the ROMs, you know, basic information like the file name, size, hashes, etc. cetera. Um, if you do find fixes first, you will also notice um, way over on the right, there is an instance count column that shows, um, if you click on it, you can see a little pop-up that shows the location of that particular ROM across um, all of your sets, whether it's in multiple DATs and your two sort, wherever. It'll list all the different locations for that particular ROM. Now, there's a lot of info down here, and some types of files have more information than others. So, um, standard, you know, sort of ROMs have, you know, just size and hashes for the most part. But if you look at um, like a headered NES ROM, you can see that there are alt hashes as well. And the reason for this is um, ROM Vault has automatic header skipping logic built in, and it will hash the, um, you know, the full file as well as the, uh, the portion without the header. So it actually captures both um, hashes automatically. And you can see here, that's why the size differs. Um, you see this versus this. There are a few bytes different to account for the header size. Now we can also see these little flags next to some of these values. Um, these little DFV flags basically mean where did the information come from. So for example, if we go back to our Atari example here, we can see the CRC32 has a D, an F, and a V. D means this value was in the DAT. F means the value was read from the archive header. And V means it was verified by decompressing and hashing um, with like a, like a level two sort of scan. So that's why you see the CRC has an F flag, but SHA-1 does not. That's because um, the SHA-1 of a file is not available um, in the header of a, a zip or 7-zip archive. Now, if you do find fixes, you'll also see, um, you know, a lot of different statuses in here. This little column here will update to show, um, you know, basically what action is going to be taken. And there is a page on the wiki called um, Color Key. It's, you know, the same sort of information is available in the app, but there's a more detailed um, outline of all of the different um, statuses that you can see inside of the ROM details grid. So this is a very helpful reference if you want to know exactly what's happening or what will happen after you click the Find Fixes button. Over on the side here, we have the tree. Um, the tree basically just outlines um, your DAT root. So everything in your DAT root is visualized in this tree here. And everything that you select in the tree is the scope for the scan, find, fix, and reporting options 
in the um, in the nav. So there's a few different sort of shortcuts that you can use for the tree. Um, you know that you got your typical you know um, left click, which will select and deselect um, all of the descendants. Uh, you know the active item and the descendants in the tree. If you hold shift and click, it will just impact that single box instead of all the descendants. So that might be useful if you want to, you know, select this, um, you know, all the children but not the parent. You can hold shift and just deselect that. If you right click, that will toggle the read only mode as signified by this little lock icon. And then to get rid of it, you can just um, click again and the colors of the tree actually mean something as well so the yellow color means that I have some some of the ROMs like I'm missing at least one the red it uh, if I had none of the ROMs it would appear as a, a red folder or red little ROM icon and if I have everything um, specified in the dats, then the um, branch would sh show as green. And then down here in your two sorts, um, these are also color coded. So purple just means it's a regular two sort with stuff scanned in it. Green means um, you don't have anything in it. And red is rarely ever seen, but it basically means that you have only corrupt items in that two sort directory. And here you can see you know, the little um, status icons or type icons next to each game. So they're highlighted red when you, um, uh, when it's corrupt. Now, you may have noticed as I'm kind of digging into some of this stuff here that um, I kept going back and navigating through the tree. You can also navigate in the game list grid by, um, Double clicking left and right. So if you double, um, if you double right click, it will actually bring you up a level. If you um, double left click, it will drill in a level, uh, depending on what it is you clicked on. So pretty helpful. Multiple ways to navigate. And then finally, the last part of the main UI is the um, the side buttons here. Um, as discussed in the getting started video. Everything that you select in the tree is this defines the scope for the scan, find, fix, and reporting actions. And that can get kind of cumbersome sometimes. So if you're if you have a very large collection and you um, you know have certain things that you want to select and deselect, you can use presets. So for example, you might download stuff on you know every other day or something. And you don't need to scan, you know, your entire um, your entire ROMs directory every single time if nothing's changed there. So what you can do is you can create little shortcuts by right-clicking um, one of these icons. And when you do that, it saves saves the complete state of the tree, and then you can restore it just by left-clicking. So here, um, you know, I saved the state as just. Um, these three two sorts, and then I can left click, and it resets the state of the tree back to what um, what that shortcut specified. So that's basically the main UI. Um, pretty simple. It's a you know a, a unified view. There's a lot of information packed in here, but once you get used to the UI and kind of all the different status icons, I think you'll find that. Um, this is a pretty intuitive way to manage um, your your collections. Now there are a few other um, you know supplemental windows outside of the main UI. Uh, the big one is Dat Vault, which you can access through the um, the header navigation here, or by right clicking. So the Dat Vault update. Um, you know, I'll create a separate video that kind of goes into this in more detail because there's a lot here. But just know that you can access it through um, either the button or the header navigation. When you are fixing 
So if I do this, let's just do find fixes, fix ROMs, you'll notice this fixing window that comes up. The fixing window is a running log of all of the fixes that were done. And um, you have to dismiss it to, um, you know, to get back to, to the main UI. You can still navigate around even when a fix is running. You just have to move this out of the way and you can still, you know, sort of navigate around. Now, there's a lot of different statuses in the fixing log, and I'm not going to go into what each one is, but just know those are also on the wiki um, on the UI overview page. So there's a page here called UI overview, which goes into more detail um, about a lot of the content that I have you know, went over in this video. But way down at the bottom, you'll see there is um, a list of all the different status references that you'll see in the fixing log and what each one means. So this is helpful if you just see an action happen and you want to you know, just double check what does that actually mean. Aside from that, there's a couple other little things. Um, you know, obviously we have the, the global settings window up here, which we went over in the getting started video, and the directory settings, um, which there, there's a lot you can do in here. And um, I will create another video that dives into this um, a lot deeper. But basically, you just have your main UI, and then dat vault, global settings and directory settings. Those are, are the main places that you'll um, be spending your time, I suppose. And that's about it. That's the, you know, a quick tour of the ROM Vault UI. And hope this helps um, you get started and familiarize yourself with everything.